In a recent video, we covered this controversial shot. And there was an abundance of comments and thoughts and feedback into our comment section. If you haven't seen that video, we'll pop a link down below so you can check it out. So thank you to everyone who's chimed in already and who's going to in the future. And also, thank you for doing exactly what I predicted, in that everyone was so polite and civil and friendly through their debate, even if they had different opinions. And I mean, the truth is, you kind of had to, because, sorry, but this is a... A Canadian game so sorry when you debate it you're gonna have to act like sorry Canadians so I'm really sorry to impose that upon you but thank you sorry for playing along sorry I'm bad sorry I'm blue sorry about all the things I said to you and you know sorry Jeremy Tracy here of Tracy Crokinole Boards, and in this video, we're not going to dig into all the comments because that would just take too long. We're going to zero in on one specific comment and question that came from our friend, Christopher Putney. And I'm paraphrasing here, but he basically said, all right, it's all, all well and fine to have this debate, but how often does this actually come in play? I mean, it's a tougher shot, so why would someone opt for that? And although I will admit it's not like it happens every round or every match or even every day that you play, there are absolutely times that doing this shot would be your best strategy. For this video, let's forget about whether this is legal or not because as the rules stand right now, this is absolutely a legal and valid shot in an NCAA tournament. It's certainly legal and valid if you ever come to my house and play by my house rules. So let's forget about that controversy right now and just focus on, in this video, three specific times that you may want to apply this. Like I say, it doesn't happen all the time, but there are times when it comes up. So we're gonna look at one, two, three, different scenarios that this would absolutely be your best strategy. Scenario number one would be at the end of a round when you've got the final shot and if you don't use this there is absolutely zero chance of you winning the round. So you've heard me say this, one of the great things about Crokinole is every time you play different scenarios and setups take place on the board. So here is just an example. So let's say you're sitting here, you have the final shot. You've got hammer shot, it's your turn to shoot. And you look around, you do an assessment of the score. You see that your opponent has one more 20 than you do. They've got one in the 15, sorry, one in the 15, one in the five, and you've got one sitting out in the five. So if you were to find a way to just do that takeout, so you hit and stick here, Hit and stick here, it leaves you with 20 points on the board, which cancels out their 20, but they've still got five on the board, you lose. So although doing a double, like a push shot where two buttons go, may be a low percentage shot, in this situation, that is your only chance to win. Even if you could successfully get that off and a 20, at that point you tie, I don't know how you feel about ties, but in this situation, if you're able to successfully line up, push two buttons in there, I didn't get the off, but let's assume that I had gotten the off. Then they've got 20, 25 to my 30, I win. Again, low percentage shot, but in this situation, it is your only chance to win. And there are scenarios that are different, sl slightly different that, than that that will set up. But also, if you do that math before your final shot, which I highly recommend, and you look at if you just do a simple hit and stick takeout, if you're guaranteed to lose, but this is an option, absolutely consider it. So the next question is, is that, the, is that the only time that you would do it is when you would be pushing one of your own buttons up into a higher point region in order to overtake that? And my answer is no. The next two, uh, uh, scenarios number two and three, are absolutely situations where you would be pushing your opponent's button further into the board. Let's take a look at those. Scenario number two would be, again, when you're late in the round and you look at the board and you do the math and you realize, you recognize that you absolutely have to get a double takeout in order to have any chance to win. Now again, I've, I've placed these buttons exactly where I want them to, to illustrate the point, but even if there, there's a situation that is different than this, this could still come up. But if you look at this situation and your opponent has two buttons in the five and one in the 10. So in order to win, you need to get a double takeout and leave your shooter in the 10. If all you do is do a takeout, you're going to tie. But if you are able to successfully 
achieve that double. And again, the other thing I'd say in this situation, nearly impossible to get yourself an angle that's going to allow you to naturally get a double takeout without pushing too forward. Then again, if you can line this up and get this, so those two buttons, they hit and they split. Is this a high percentage shot? No, it's not, but it is your only option to win the round. And that's, that's the type of situation where you're going to use this. So you line this up in the hopes of getting the double. Now in this situation, I actually slid over here. So I ended up with a five, we tied, but it's still, uh, that was still my only chance in order to overcome the, the situation I dug myself into in that uh, on that board. So then you may be saying, but it's only late in the round that you'd ever consider that. Absolutely not. Our third scenario is a completely different situation that uh, should be considered as an option at any point in the round. Let's dig into that now. This third situation that I'm going to lay out here is, is a situation that really only applies to doubles. And uh, once you start playing at a higher level, playing competitive doubles, you, you'll realize a couple things. Strategy is so important. You'll also realize that these players that, that appear to be nice people, I've even declared that they're nice people, they're actually quite ruthless. And if they have an opportunity to hoodwink you and put you in a really bad spot, they will absolutely do it. So. Let me lay out this as a, again, I've made this up, I've, I've manufactured this on the board, but it absolutely could happen. So let's say that uh, we're playing doubles, you're sitting across from me, you're my partner. It is my shot, the opponents have one in the 15, but they also, and this is the key point here, they have one nestled on my side of the board in that if you've ever tried to shoot across the center hole, and pick this off, you know what a dirty shot that is to have to go after. When it's in that perfect spot that you can't get an angle, it forces you to go over the center hole. I have a video to teach you how to have a higher success rate with that, but it is still a tough shot. So in a double situation, you could look at this and say, okay, I wanna make sure that my partner isn't in that situation. So let's say I did opt to not push this forward and I just do a hit and stick there. My opponent over here, who seems like a nice person, but really isn't, they're evil, they're the devil reincarnated, what they absolutely could do, I've seen it done, and to be honest, I'd do it myself if I was in that situation. They could shoot from here, knock that off, and intentionally lose their shooter, thus forcing you to have to make this dirty, nasty shot all the way across the board. So knowing that my opponent, who sits to my left, is that type of a person, evil, and, um, Diabolical? Does that fit? I think he's diabolical. Anyway, knowing that that's the situation, if I want to make sure that they can't do that to you as my partner, what I could then do is do actually push theirs forward. Can this potentially be bad? Absolutely. Any time that you put an opponent's button into the host, you are running the risk of catching a peg coming back in. But again, you can look at this and make the strategic decision that this is a safer play for you to go ahead and put one of their buttons up into the center and make sure that your partner isn't forced to shoot all the way across the board. Again, there are so, every time you play different situations and scenarios set up, so those were the three that came to mind as I thought about this, why would someone do it? But what did we miss, or or what would you uh, what would you disagree with me on? And I mean, the truth is, anytime we're talking strategy, someone can absolutely disagree. It's a decision that's made in the moment of the game, and you do whatever you think is going to set you up to be most likely to succeed in that match. So feel free to debate these, and uh, you know, are there different situations where you think this shot is the best strategy, etc. So there you have it, there's your three specific scenarios that can set up on the board when you are going to want to apply this shot to gain a strategic advantage on your opponents. So in the weeks and matches that lie ahead of you, I'd encourage you to you know, push your limits, push your creativity while you're playing the greatest game on earth.